If you look at Wendy, what Wendy's done already, Wendy has already changed them children's names and she did actually say as well on the stand that she might change them again and not to, um, not back to Markel. Dan Markel didn't do anything to deserve, or his family didn't do anything to deserve her changing them names. Um, I, th I think Wendy is very much ahead of the game here, uh, a lot more than we'd give her credit for. I don't, I, I'm not saying that she's smart as she thinks she is. She's devious. She's very, very devious. And I, I'm very concerned. Uh, the other reason I'm concerned is that, but just before I go any further, quick disclaimer, my name's Dawn, you found Lounge Bar Crime, Everything you hear in this video is from my own research, it's my opinion, and it's for entertainment purposes only. That out of the way, let's get started. I was going over old podcasts and um, write-ups with regards to this case, going back quite a few years, because we know, you know, it's been going on since 2014. But, and Georgia Kaplan did say at one stage that it is possible that they may not get everybody. Now, admittedly, that was before they got hold of Charlie. I actually thought it was a bit ridiculous for the length of time that they left it to get hold of Charlie. Um, for everything in this case, I think it's gone on far, far too long. You, you that watch me know anyway, and I know that a lot, as I've said in the past, people are going to say, you know, it's just not that easy, Dawn. You can't just... You know, with regards to Georgia Kaplan, I'm not saying she's not a good attorney. She is a good attorney. I've said all this. I've said it all. But I, I, I can't help but keep coming back to this, that when things go on and on, as i shown in the in the previous video with uh, June Unchinda, her evidence became diluted. My concentration is more on Wendy than on Donna, and I know a lot of people's is on Donna. And I know that Georgia Kaplan thinks that Donna was behind it all. I do think Donna Donna was behind it all. We know that. But as I've said in a previous video, I believe for the reasons given in that video that Wendy was the one that was gaslighting everybody long before. So I'm I'm looking I'm thinking about cases in the past, for example. Um you know, it, like I said, Nicole Kessinger, nobody knows where she is. Her father was friends with somebody um, and within the law department, within the police department, sorry, and they went dead easy on her. I mean, when you've got somebody sat there saying, don't interview my friend Jim, and then they don't, and they don't grab his phone, and they don't, all them things went by the bind. Don't forget, Wendy already rode this wave for a long time off the back of people that she knew and places that she was working, using people to stand her corner. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe one day, I might just do a video on um, corruption. I'm not saying there's corruption in this case, um, but I definitely feel that Wendy has lent on people that have got some kind of um, influence if you like. And I don't know why she believes that people with money um, have influence, which they do, but she should be more concerned about the people such as me, such as fancy fiction, mentor, lawyer, Judy at AA Legal. She should be more concerned about influencing influencing people like us, not, not people that send a letter on her behalf to say before we employed her we we check this they're not detectives what's that got to do with anything and who do they think they are these people that they can just do that i suppose you could say the same to me who do you think you are don thinking that you can just come on here and say this but i'm not um i'm not saying that somebody didn't wasn't behind murdering somebody and trying to get somebody off with it when i don't know I mean, if you can prove to me that Wendy had nothing to do with this, 
then fine, I'll accept that. But you would have to prove it to me because so far, all the evidence, overwhelming evidence, shows me that she was very much behind it, just as much as Donna, just as much as Kaching Harvey, Charlie, Magbanoa, Rivera, Garcia. She, she's just as much behind it as all of them. And it was all through her. Like Krista Coe said, this is all about you. He couldn't have said it. You know that sentence, if you look over the internet, it, it's always plastered. And he couldn't have said a truer sentence. It was all about her. This is why I am on this case so much with Wendy, because I just worry that it's all going to be diluted down and we're just going to end up with, I mean, Right, this, this is the impression. Listening to what I've heard and what I've read is that they feel that they've got Charlie. And it, it's, it appears to me, I might have this totally wrong, but it appears to me that more or less they're going to find out what mistakes or what comes up when Charlie's on the stand with regards this proffer and everything for getting the others. So they're going to be relying to a degree on Charlie. So what was in the proffer? There's obviously not enough in that proffer just to go and get Wendy. They've not been able to go and get, just go and pick Wendy up or Donna up. There wasn't enough in it because I don't, I, why would you sit on it for all this time if there was enough if there was enough in that proffer to just go okay you know we, but it's like no we're gonna put charlie on the stand this is what i think is going to happen i don't know but it looks like they're going to put charlie on the stand and then mess about with his head a bit to get his mother and possibly his father now in between and i've no doubt that donna I don't think Charlie is not going to Charlie's not going to drop his family in it and I'll tell you why and th this is why I'm going to do a video on, on the Adam uh, sorry on the Adelson family but I'll give you this much that message is going to go back to Charlie and the message is going to be don't be dropping else in it because then you know you do your time quietly otherwise all three of us Oh, the other three, me, your father and Wendy, are all going to go down. What's going to happen with them boys? And Charlie the Dumbo, the maestro that he, he, he calls himself, he's not going to drop his parents in it. He's not going to talk. I, I don't think for one minute, listen, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope you can all come back to me on here and say, Dawn, see, look. Charlie's singing like a canary, but I don't think he will because his mother would have played with his head. And in, in that other video, the Adelson family, I'm going to stop doing that now because it's a bit naughty. Um, I'm going to just show you a few things. They all play with each other's head. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I think the only one that doesn't is Harvey. But Harvey's an enabler, just with his kitchen, is an enabler. So this is how I think it's going to plan, pan out. They're going to wait for Charlie. They're going to be able to convict him. With him, they're going to be able to drag Donna into it. Donna's going to scream like a bee, just like she's taught her daughter to do. And... I don't think she's I don't think she's gonna get away with very much. Not too sure on Harvey, although <laughs> um it depends on what they've got on the books. You know, his car and all that lot. That Lexus. Like I said, people don't make money like he makes by giving away Lexus Lexus cars and things like that. So Hopefully, they should be able to, um, forensic accountant should be able to sort all that out in no time at all. And I just don't think 
that they're going to drop Wendy. And that's the one for me because nobody, Dan wouldn't be where he was other than for Wendy. And it all got going because Wendy wanted to go to Florida and the icing on the cake was Donna not being able to see the children alone. So that's my thoughts on that. Now, I, like I said, I did do um, the first part of, of this and seriously, I did get a belly full of that and I'd, I couldn't finish the video because I just thought, it, apart from which it was going to be too long. So I just, I just broke it in half. So I'll just go over a few more things that was going on on the stand with Wendy. Okay, I've just got to show you this bit here first. A condescending smile to, it, it was the first time she was on the stand to Judge Hankinson. On the way to run your errands, did you go by the crime scene? No. So I'm not gonna go over all that where she didn't turn down Trescott Drive. Yes, she did, you know, she didn't visit the crime scene. She did, because actually, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to put the whole trial up there and I've just got a few words at the start of it, but I'm going to put the whole trial up so that you can, you can watch that as well. But um, she even says in that, that she went, you know, she, she more or less went to the crime scene. Well, she went down Trescott this morning, she'd said. Then the first time on the stand, she didn't visit the crime scene. Then the third, second time on the stand, she did visit the crime scene. And were you on the phone when you encountered the roadblock? If you I remember? Was. Do you remember who you were speaking to? I do. Who was that? You don't have to say the name, but just what type of person was that? Um, he was a friend. I hadn't caught up with him a long time. He'd moved to England. Um, funnily enough, she was also on the phone to somebody as well as she did that. It, 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 it is so obvious she was covering every step. How anybody can think for one minute that she wasn't involved in this. I don't know. This is what I wanted to say. With regards, um, Nicole Kessinger, you know, I'm going to get called out on this because I'm generalising here. But when I, when I covered the uh, Nicole Kessinger case, and similarly, when I've been covering things to do with Wendy, it is usually heterosexual men that fancy them, that say, oh, that fault for all that BS. You know all them tears and all the rest of it why can't i find a man like that honestly <laughs> but they do it not all of you okay i'm not saying all of you but the women we're clued up because we know we've grown up with other women like that that have said things like oh just put on the tears and it's learned behavior it's they've been able to get away with it like Nicole Kessinger she was daddy's little girl couldn't do anything wrong Wendy you know the little princess in the family and and this this is what um really really sort of like cheesed cheesed me off as well like when I I've not had a lot of comments but I've seen comments bantered about the internet and you can tell that not not all of them a lot of them though are men I don't know the ages I, 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 you know, and I'm saying the heterosexual, they might be gay. I don't know, but it's just some of the wording that they use, like they fancy them and what they do to them and I'd let them off. You know, joking aside, that's what we don't want on the jury. That's exactly what we don't want on the jury. I'm just interrupting this video just for a moment, just to say, if you're enjoying this video, even if it's just a titchy bit, you know what I'm going to say. Hit that titch like button below. Smash that subscribe button. Otherwise, you're going to miss more videos. I'm doing another video that's coming up on the Adams family. Sorry, the Adelson family. I beg your pardon. Also, subscribe to my social media. I've opened up social media everywhere. Also, just to let you know that I do have a case coming up on Patreon, which it's a case that's close to home, actually. It's an exclusive. It won't be on YouTube. So for my patrons, that will be on there, hopefully by the end of this week. Okay, let's get back to this. 
Did you or your children benefit financially from your husband's death? Absolutely not. Was there a, did your husband have a life insurance policy? He did have a life insurance policy. And what was the value of that policy? I don't know what the value of it was at the time. I do know that his sister's the custodian of that um, life insurance policy and I pay taxes on that money every year, but we don't, we don't receive any of it. What was the value of it at the time of your husband's death? It was a million dollars. Not two million? A million for each child. Two million dollars. You didn't inquire through your attorney about challenging the designation of the sister as the, the custodian of that money? I wasn't trying to challenge the designation, no. Do you have access personally to that money? No. All right. What about a 401k? Did, did your ex-husband have a 401k when he died? I believe he did. That's an outright lie because she would have financially benefited and she tried to go after money. So this is what I'm not getting at all. And this, I think this is what's frustrating me because it's like so damned obvious that they must, they've got this evidence. I know that they've got certain evidence because we've heard it where people have said that she tried to go after certain funds. Um, I won't go into all that now because hopefully this is all going to come out at trial when Wendy's on the stand for a third time, not lucky. But um, she she did. She she tried to go. She tried to go for funds. Um, even, even there was a GoFundMe page. She she was trying to get that as well. So I don't understand all this. I mean, I know the question there was would you have financially be benefited absolutely not and she's she's also bringing on this tone as well this she's trying to keep this balanced tone but she breaks she she hasn't got she can't keep control um she try she tries to but she's no good at it you push her too far uh, which is why i said in the first video part of this that she 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 deflects she, it's emotional blackmail she lies she gets angry she does all them things um in response when you when you start prodding too hard and i i, I did i i have said this before as well I, i'd love sarah duggan to handle her next time definitely N again i always feel like i have to sort of say you know that I'm not. Um, I'm not trying to bring Georgia Kappelman down. She, she's, you know, she's good at her job, and I have said as well, she's a good match for Wendy. She's a good match because she's she's cool and all the rest of it. The the difference being is that um, don't forget we've seen Georgia Kappelman question Magbanoa when Magbanoa was on the stand being accused and. I, I, I thought she went really light on her. She didn't really press on her. Whereas, like, Sarah Duggan did. S Sarah Duggan was, like, really going for it. And that's what I think it's going to need with Wendy because we need Wendy to break and lose it. And I think Sarah Duggan could make her do that. Whereas I think it's all right being calm and calculated, which both sides of the, those fences are needed for this case and they will be needed for Wendy but um, I just think Sarah Duggan knows how to prod and um, oh, Wendy doesn't Wendy doesn't like being put in a corner and I, I just think you'd see the other side of her like like when Decoast did it and, and we saw this we saw this picture of her that that was during the Decoast um, like I said, I, I got that picture because I just paused. I just paused the video while I went and made a cup of tea. And then when I came back, I didn't realise where I paused it. When I came back, that, that was looking at me. Um, and that, that's that been circulated all over the place, that, that picture. But um, that Wendy, Wendy can't handle it. She can't handle being pushed in a corner. And uh, true colours come out. And that's what the jury need to see. Anyway, let's let's just crack on. Do you want the culpable parties in this murder held accountable? Absolutely. And even if it involves your own family? Absolutely. 
Then, do you recall giving an interview with law enforcement on the day that your husband, ex-husband, was murdered? I recall sitting with law enforcement for six hours, yes, I recall. And did you tell law enforcement something different in that interview about the culpability of your family? I'm sure while I sat for six hours completely traumatized that I said all kinds of things. All right, and was one of the things you said while you sat for six hours completely traumatized that you wanted the culpable parties held accountable unless it was your family? I don't believe I phrased it like that, and I think you're taking my words out of context, but sure. But sure? But sure what? That's what I mean. No further questions. With regards to that. All right, we're going to take our... Um, Georgia Koppelman handled her very well there. I'm not disputing that at all. But I just wonder where that would have gone if it had been Sarah Duggan. Because Sarah Duggan... And Sarah Duggan, keep, I think, keeps, keeps people on track. And she doesn't let them run away. You know, like she said to... Uh, Catherine McBanner, well, you've just said this. She she challenges them, um, whereas, like, Wendy can be lying through her teeth. And sometimes I just feel like Georgia Kappelman goes on to the next question or just lets Wendy go on and on and on, putting a case over. And it just takes Georgia Kappelman sometimes a couple of minutes. I know I'm, no, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I'm not bothered. I'm just going to say it anyway because, like I've said, in the past, uh, Dan Michael's parents, that you know, they're vulnerable and they can't really fight for this case. They can't really, they're not in a position, I don't think, where they feel they can push attorneys because, as I've just said, they're, they're vulnerable. So it's up to us, whatever we think. And it doesn't matter which direction that we come from and who we think, whatever. The, the point is, we need to, we need to keep the pressure on on this case, whether that's on attorneys, whatever attorney, and um, the Adelsons, all of them. So, so be it. Right? About what, I'm sorry? Keeping kosher. About keeping kosher, yes. Right? In your knows. wedding, at your wedding, was the, the Grooms family, the Markel family, and they are more strict than your family and friends about keeping kosher. They do not keep kosher. Wasn't that one of the problems in your marriage that Professor Markell was very insistent about keeping kosher? About his kosher rules, but those are different than his family's. So you're saying that it wasn't a problem at the wedding, that there were people from the groom's side of the family that were there that strictly keep kosher, that they were told that it was going to be kosher food, but it actually wasn't. So there was a misunderstanding about whether the food was going to be kosher style or more in adherence with kosher law. There was a miscommunication about that. Listen, I know nothing about the Jewish faith um, or kosher food, but um, is there any such thing as kosher style? How can you have is something not, not kosher, is it either kosher or not? That's what I thought. How can you have kosher style? I just didn't think that there was any such thing as kosher style food. Kosher, kosher food is, 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 a, is a type of food done in a certain manner. How can you style it as not being... Yeah, okay. It's in the door. The boys are not in the house, right? Correct. And you did not tell Professor Markell where you were taking the boys. He may have seen them the next day, but you did not let him know where you were going to be staying with his boys. With our boys? Yes. So you agree with me that they're also his? Of course they're his. And he should be entitled to know where his wife is taking his children. Absolutely. That's not all you took, is it? Excuse me? <laughs> you two had a joint checking account at Schwab, right? We did. And you went into that account before you dropped the bomb, and you took out half of that account, right? Correct. Roughly $350,000. Half, yes. Of our $350,000. I don't remember the amount, but yes. You know that it was in the hundreds of thousands. I really don't remember the amount, sir. Is it that insignificant of a sum to you that you I'm don't not remember? I'm insignificant sum. I'm saying I can't attest to the amount that was there. 
you know the thing that really annoys me about this part is that yeah she took half the cash and she took family heirlooms that belonged to the Markel family so that person that we're talking about seriously winds me up that person was okay to take the Markel family heirlooms but not their name you can have your name back but the Markel family heirlooms I'm going to keep that's what Wendy's made of that's what she is I need to calm down again <laughs> I just want Wendy doing the time she deserves to do and I want them boys to get the name back I don't think they'll ever get the name back incidentally but um I mean this case we've also compared it a lot with regards to the grandparents to the Mike Williams case where Denise Williams behaved just like Wendy exactly and do you know that one <laughs> she actually even though she knew that all she had to do was hold her hands up and she would have got so many years less she didn't she'd still stood in court that one denise williams saying your honor like while I, while i've been in in jail i've been teaching people to read and write and i'm only guilty of not realizing that um sometimes people aren't as well off as me she you couldn't get through to her she wouldn't have it and she did everything and that daughter of hers does not want to know because she's been brainwashed and i said i've covered that as well i've covered that case but she's been brainwashed but there's no point in speaking to that daughter about it because when somebody's brainwashed to that extent um yeah She's had a lifetime, and that's what these lads have, have, would have done. They by the time all this is ended, it'd have been their life. They all they know are the Adelsons. They don't know the Markels. They don't know. Um, they only know that kind of life with them, and little gaslighting, drip fed, drip fed. Um, like Denise Williams never remembered. Uh, like uh, Denise Williams' daughter said that her mother reminded of her, her of her father every day, which was a load of rubbish. She even she even had a daughter lying in court because her, her grandmother was actually sat there. So you would say, you know, you you need to, you know, there's your grandmother, your grandmother tell you all about your dad, blah blah blah. No, no, and that this, this is what's going to happen with with these now, and it's too late. Denise Williams' daughter, too late, gone. It's too late. Once they've had so so many years at it, you can't you can't undo. You can't. Some professionals can, but not not all the time. And I just don't think though those lads are ever going to get the Markel name back. Um, but in between and um, yeah, when they will keep them heirlooms the markel heirlooms as she as she package them as she give them to anybody to return them no not that i know of if she has put put it down below and tell me i've not heard about it she's kept hold of them why does she think it's her right to keep hold of family heirlooms if she doesn't want to be part of that family you give them back i'm going to tone it down you are unhappy in the marriage right that's why I got divorced, yes. And it happens. Marriages fall apart, right? Yes. But you, you, you complained constantly about it, didn't you? No, I don't think I complained constantly. To anyone that would listen? No, that's not true. I definitely talked to my brother about how unhappy I was in my marriage. If that's the question, then yes. Let's Is talk that about the question? That. Yes, that is a question. You talked to your brother, Charles Adelson, about how bad your marriage was. I did, yes. Do you know she's a right condescending, isn't she? You know, 
Is that the question? Get Sarah Doug in there. <laughs> is that the question? Of, of course it's the question and she did speak to anybody and everybody that would listen because she was busy gaslighting everybody, even her own friend Jane who stood by her side for God knows how long, went on a walk with her days before to just make sure she had in her head that Dan made her unhappy, you know, he was hard on her and, oh, I wonder if Geoffrey Lacaz could have done this. He's very jealous. She's a gaslighter. That's what she does. I'm going to say something else as well. You never hear me in any videos talk about uh, I, I never describe people as narcissistic, um, psychotic, psychopath, all that. Um, I, and I'm, I'm not bothered about anybody else that does. It, I, that's not my point. My point is I don't because um, I don't feel that I know enough about each one. I actually, again, I'm, I've been doing a little bit on this, on serial killers, um, but... What I do know is, I do know that the Adelsons, definitely Wendy, Donna and Charlie are narcissistic. But I'd go even further on, I've been reading up and I've just been reading up on some of Wendy's uh, personality traits, some of the things that she does and uh, I would actually, and this is a first for me, <laughs> I would actually say that she's, she's, she's a borderline psychopath. Um, now, in previous videos, I've always brought up the fact that um, if you see the, the video that I did about her games of cat and mouse, she gets some kind of a kick. She'll flip. You know, don't you dare do this to me. Don't, you know, she'll kick off like we've seen her do on the stand and everything. But leading up, um, even though at times we heard that uh, Jeffrey Lacasse said that leading up in the June, she was crying for no reason all the time. Um, and that's, it was supposed to have been done the month before originally, if you remember. And, it, you know, it, she was just crying and he, he, she wouldn't say why and all the rest of it. So at one stage, she shows um, slight um, empathy or is it guilt or is she scared of getting caught or does she just want it over and done with? We don't really know. But I think the fact that, that she did the uh, bullet bourbon um, and she, she, you know, the owl t-shirt and things that don't really get mentioned much now which are pretty damning, I think. But um, it's as though there's a slight, she's getting a slight kick out of it. And to me, um, from from what I've read, I would say that's slightly, um, that's, that's, that's a borderline psychopath, that definitely, in, from what I've read. Can you think of one person in this world that would actually hire two, two people to go kill Professor Markell other than your family? Yeah, Miss Adelson, please answer. Please address me and answer the question. I'd love to calls for an unbelievable amount of speculation. I mean, I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm responsible for coming up with, uh, that's the prosecutor's duty, you know, to figure out who's responsible. You just said a moment ago that you, you disagree that hitmen killed Professor Markell. That, that's what you said, right? So my question to you is, if you're able to say, well, it wasn't Hitman, then who? Tell this jury. Who on this planet would have wanted to kill Professor Markell? I have no idea. All right. Let's get into that a little bit. But I want, I want to make sure that's clear. This joke is made right before Professor Markell is murdered, right? The joke was made many times. It was made right before Professor Markell was murdered. Yes or no? Yes. You know, she left town within five minutes. She didn't stay to help. And that, these are the points that he's trying to make. But she's like turning to the judge. She actually believes that that judge should, um, I don't know, 
say say something. It doesn't. He he leaves that to answer, you know, answer the question. But what what is a joke with that is at some stages when she's she's on the stand, she turns to the judge like you, you seen earlier, and she gives him like a little laugh at something menial that he's saying, and then in the next um, and our previous time to that, um, I think it was with Hankinson, she was like that, oh, she didn't know whether to stand or sit. She's been a liar. July 18, 2014, you're interviewed, and you make a statement saying, I knew this would happen. You said that, right? That's what I'm hoping. I did. It's a sign of things to come. Where the coast just, just said to her, you said that right. I knew this would happen. She looks like she'd just been smacked in the face with a rugby ball. She was like, she was snub. She didn't know what to answer. And then she said, I did. You see, um, in things like, things like that, you don't, you don't, why would you say things like that? You wouldn't. So this is, this is what I want to see. And if it's, it, obviously it's not going to be decost. At Decos, that's going to speak, to, that's going to question her. I don't think, I wouldn't have thought. Um, so let it, let it be Sarah Duggan because Sarah Duggan is, I think, is the nearest on the prosecution side, the state prosecution to Decos, where she fires up a bit. I, I need to stop saying Sarah Duggan. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Georgia Kaffelman. It's not, it's not personal. The, I, I'd, I'd like it's both stood there actually to question her. I just think it just needs to be done. It needs to be done quick. Um, because all this hanging around, hanging around, um, and I know, I know whatever is going to say, they've got to be 100%, not going to be 100%. If they, if they leave it for t another 10 years, they're not going to be 100%. So, and I, I've said that, I've said that in videos when I first started covering this case, she can't do this because she's got to be 999 point nine. Of course she has, but she's not going to be 99.9. .9. So what 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 are we going to do, or what is she going to do? Is is it going to be like oh well, um, I think I think maybe 65 percent, but that's not enough, so we'll let it go. No, go with your 65 percent and do you do the best job that you can. That's how I think of it. And so you've made the decision. Now you're a lawyer yourself too, right? I am. And you made the decision, I'm not going to look at any of this stuff. Correct. I don't want to know what happened to the father of my two children. Not I don't want to know what happened. How can you say you love those boys if you don't care who killed the father that they loved? Of course I care who killed the father that they loved. Then why won't you look at the stuff? I've been advised not to. Are you afraid that when you look at it, you're going to realize that your brother did this? I am not afraid of that. Now, of course, you, you, you've... And we won't get into privileged communications, but you've spoken to your lawyer about the case. How are we not getting into privileged communications? Yes, I've spoken to my lawyer about the case. You're very intelligent. You have one of the top defense attorneys in the country, a former federal prosecutor, John Law, right there in the blue suit, right? He is my attorney. You're telling me with all of this at your disposal, your intelligence, his experience, and all this information, that you don't care to find out who it is that killed Professor Markell? This is not that I don't care to find out. My job is to take care of those boys, and that is what I do. I don't see how it helps take care of them to go reading and watching and soaking up all of the horrible information that's out there. You don't realize that you could be helpful in finally untangling this to give this jury the truth about what happened to Professor Markell? I have been nothing but helpful since this started. To what happened to their son? By you looking at it, you are at the center of all this, but you won't look at anything to help in the process. I've done nothing but help in this process. You came here and testified. I came here and testified. I spoke to the to police be... for six hours without anyone present. I signed over my cell phone, my car, my house, everything, my computer. What else do I have or know that you haven't seen? I'm here because you were subpoenaed and had no choice. Correct. Right? This is not fun. You've I would been, not do this by choice. You've been inconvenienced. I've not been inconvenienced. Professor Markell was shot in the head. 
I'm not complaining about being here. This is my duty. I'm here. We'll get back to you complaining about being here. She, she should be doing everything that she can. You know, she shouldn't have been running off to Florida. She should have been staying behind to help as much as she can. So I do, actually, duty for her probably is the correct word. You understand that until you expose your brother what he did, that everybody's going to consider you as guilty. You understand that, right? What is the question that you're asking me? You understand that until you expose your brother and explain what he did, that he went behind everybody's back, that he hired a hitman to murder your ex-husband, you'll remain guilty in the eyes of the world. I can't speak to the eyes of the world. I can only know that I have done nothing wrong. Or maybe you are guilty. I am not guilty. So a witness in this case, and I'm not going to get into their testimony, but one of the hitmen, the convicted hitman, implicates you. On July 17, 2014, the day before the murder, the morning before, he says that you were walking on Trescott with the two boys, that you walked down the driveway and into the house. That never happened. Right, because Dan, Professor Markell, I apologize, Professor Markell, he had the kids based on the way that your guy's schedule was. On that day, he would have had the children in the morning and you're going through such a bad divorce, you wouldn't be at his house, right? I wouldn't be at his house anyway, but not because we weren't, we were going through a bad divorce. At that time, things were pretty copacetic. All right, so we're coming back to maybe you do know, or maybe you were involved. Excuse me? What's I, the I, question that you're asking me? I'm... So there you are. There's Wendy. Excuse me? What's the question? So now she's got a lawyer head on. You can't be both. You can't be both. One minute you turn to the judge asking him to stand up for you. Next minute, you know, you don't know anything. You don't remember anything. And then all of a sudden, when he implies that you, she was involved, excuse me. And then she, she questions him. Um, I wonder, actually, for all I've said wrong about <laughs> Georgia Kappelman, I wonder if she'd speak to Georgia Kappelman like that. Now, hmm, there's a thought. What do you think? Um, she did turn to her though, didn't she? And say to her, uh, you know, I think you're more or less twisting, twisting my words. I can't remember her exact words, but um, she did say that to Georgia Kappelman. Um, so, mm, I don't know. I think she probably would say something like that, but I don't. I don't think she would say it with that attitude. I think she'd tone the attitude down a little bit. Um, whereas I think if Sarah Duggan um, did it to her, I think um, I think then she'd probably. I think she'd probably go head on with Sarah Duggan, but I think she'd be very surprised at Sarah Duggan because Sarah Duggan looks like this little meek and mild. Um, little little blonde, little blonde thing that you know. She just looks like so angelic. Psst. Somebody put something in my comments um, about her. Um, I can't remember the term that they used, but more or less, like she's headstrong. She's she's you know she's she's to be reckoned with. She's not um, she's not as she seems. She's in the right job. Is Sarah Duggan? So, um, yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. You see, like there, when she says, I can't speak for the eyes of the world, I would have been saying that's, the, you know, answering the question until you, and repeat the question, you're going to remain guilty in the eyes of the world. Do you understand that? And she won't say, well, yes or no or whatever i can't speak for the eyes of the world and then she'll go on and she'll say what she wants to say and this is what um when they've got wendy on that stand this is what they're all gonna need to be aware of and you know what i to be fair that second time on the stand i mean decos did run amok with her really he gave her a hard time thank god but um I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty 
disillusioned uh, by the prosecution. Let's just call it, say the prosecution now, because I'm not pointing my finger at any particular one. Pretty disillusioned that they they knew from the first time that she was on the stand how she was going to answer things. I know that they've got to let her get away with so much anyway, because she's not actually on trial here. But uh, my point is that when she does come to get on trial, they, they've they got this now. They know. They know how she's going to answer everything. They could have somebody sat in that chair acting as Wendy to practically say what she's going to say back. I know I, I would be able to pick up a certain attitude that Wendy has and um, respond in the same way that Wendy does. So why are they, you know, they need to be, they need to be ready for this. They need to know exactly what, how she's going to answer to a degree, the direction, because she's already give us um, an insight into that. So, yeah. Can I just say something else on this, on this as well? I was going to do a video on this. I might, I might actually, but um and just going back to this Wendy being smart, and I did say in that other video that she's book smart. She's had a lot of money invested in her education. And you compare her to Luis Rivera, right, who unfortunately can't read and write. Um, but you compare them and then you tell me you're smart. Louis Rivera, uh, Louis Rivera's co-conspirator to a to a murder. He was, he was one of the hitmen, actually. So, um, he's where he needs to be. That's not what I'm discussing here. I'm saying that. You you tell me if that amount of money had been put in Louis Rivera's education, and when and when they hadn't had that, then tell me where they'd both be because uh, I don't think Wendy's one bit smart at all I mean you can you can read it you know you can read a book from beginning to end can't you and know everything about it like I said book smart so you follow the rules so she, she's read up on law and all that so she knows that like Charlie although apparently is um is, is education, uh, yeah, it's, it's education. We're spoon fed to him, from what I can gather, for for him to pass to be a dentist. Apparently, he failed in certain certain areas, but he's, he's got by enough in order to do that and earn what he what he earned. And the same the same with Wendy. It's been put on a plate for them and given to them. If you look at, like, Lewis Rivera, he, he will say, you know, like, you keep asking me that. You asked me that before. Don't keep asking me that question again. Um, it, it, he's on it. He's all over it. Even though so many years have passed for him as well. Um, if you compare his, yeah, he does falter. He does go by the by um, slightly. In saying that, he's not outside with all the books and all the internet and the paraphernalia being able to watch this case over and over again that was said, what was done and everything like Wendy is and like Charlie was. Well, we don't know if Charlie's going to play this same um, th this same card as Wendy. I don't remember. It's a long time ago. We don't know yet. Um, so far, Mag Banner has and Wendy has as well. So, um, but if you, if you compare both of them together... Um, <laughs> Louis Rivera leaves her by the wayside. He leaves her standing. Absolutely. So she's she's not smart at all. And the most irritating thing about it all is that she can't be smart for to think that we're all falling for this BS. That she's, I mean, it's so far fetched. It's absolutely a joke. And this is why. And it's on that that joke of what she's had to say that I think that you can um, build a case because as Wheeler said it's not it's not always what's said it's also what's not said so right anyway in this case you were asked about you know why aren't your parents coming to testify 
you as you mentioned gave a police interview in this case right correct and consented to the search of your phone etc you gave testimony in this case right yes all right and your parents did not correct they did not give testimony they have not testified they, they have, have not asked given a to police... come testify but they would if they were asked mm, okay and have they given any police interviews they would have, but the police never contacted them. The police did contact them, didn't they? And they refused. No. Are they represented by counsel? They are represented by counsel. And they're, they will come testify if we want them to. If they are under state subpoena, just like I was, okay. they would come testify. All right. And do you know what they would testify to? They would testify to whatever they know. And, and do you know what they know? I have no idea what they know. Okay. They've never told you. No. You've never asked them? No. Because you never had any conversations with them about this murder? I've been advised by my counsel not to. All right. So nobody, including your brother Charlie, has admitted or denied to you any involvement in the murder one way or the other? Correct. Same with your parents? Correct. All right. Now, I've already covered this one, if you've watched my videos umpteen times, about they've never been asked. She's also, you know, one minute she's saying she doesn't discuss it just discuss this case at all with the family because her lawyer has advised her not to. I've never heard so much BS. And there's there's the, the smartness of Wendy. She wants us to fall for that. We're not in love with her, you know, like Dan was. I mean, Dan fell out of love with her because he found Amy, an older woman. You know, she's saying that, no, no. You know, they've, they've not been asked. They've not been asked to um, give evidence. Um, they, they haven't been asked to contacts the police and then again in the next breath I don't speak to them about the case she contradicts herself so much she doesn't reproach herself for anything that she says or does neither she doesn't there's no embarrassment that she's just really messed up on you know on what she's on what she's just said even if you just go back to um when Hankinson was the judge the first time that she was there you know and she'd already said in in the interview yes yeah i did go down trescott drive that morning and then the first time on the stand you know she, no i didn't go down trescott drive and then is this your car uh yes that's my car and then she just looks back at georgia Kappelman and she's just barefaced lied to a, a court full of people and the same with with jibbers and hank, hank hankinson judge hankinson says how do you, you know how do you spell it and you know, she says, uh, I, um, I doubt that I've, I've ever spelt it. And then Georgia Coverman tells her, well, you've got it in your phone, is this? Yes, that's right. Are you on this planet or what? And you're smart. You know, like, how much of her parents let her just behave like that and not be accountable for anything she says or does and that that's why I, that's why i definitely i, I think I, I think there's definitely something wrong with that well we know there's definitely something wrong with that she had her ex-husband murdered but definitely there's something really quite facey you know it, it you know it, it it's like it's like saying, you know, it's this top maroon. Um, you know, yes, it's maroon. But, you know, did you not tell somebody else before that it was white? Yes, I did. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's how... I know that's a bit... That's not a great analogy, I know that. But do you know what I mean? It's like, where, at, where are you coming from at all? So, yeah, it's going to be... Um, I'm going to have to wait now until... October till Charlie's there and then well until Charlie's on trial and then it's going to be whatever I think whatever they can deduce from what that case is going to look like and then I think it'll be a case of picking up Donna maybe Harvey I don't know but um I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting this. I'm getting these terrible vibes with regards to Wendy, and that's why I've, I put up that picture of Nicole Kessinger, um, because I, I, st I still believe to this day that she was the catalyst for that, 
Um, no, she never did it. I don't believe she actually did it. I know that a lot of people do. And in Wendy's case, we know that Wendy didn't actually do it, which was a catalyst for it. And both, it's the, they, it looks like the same, the same thing. And I just worry that because Wendy knows a lot of influential people, um, why they think they've got more rights um, in this case, I don't know. But anyway, they haven't. But they will be the people that will help her go underground afterwards and possibly take them children with her. Um, but there is grandparents' rights and all that lot. So we 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 don't know. You know, we 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 just don't know. But it's getting it's looking very um that with with regards to proffer, I just feel that I don't think I don't think there was enough for Wendy. Because otherwise I think they would have got us got her. Um, unless they've got something up the sleeve. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on this case. I've got coming up the whole interview. I've got a few thoughts at the start of that. But I put the, um, I'm going to put the whole interview on. If for any reason that gets removed, it'll be my Patreon again. Because um, this is what keeps happening with YouTube. So whatever. Um as I say to my patrons, there is a case going up. Um, as I've mentioned, it's it's pretty close to home. I just need to finish off a few things on it and there'll be the usual mini series that goes up uh, this week on there. I'm, I'm also going to put up this uh, long interview as well, just in case it gets knocked off. Not this one, the one on Wendy. So you'll probably see that pop up first and then you'll see this other case that I'm, that I'm doing for you. So, um, so that's it so thanks for listening to me if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe you know help help the channel out um let's keep this case alive um coming up i'm going to be doing the you've got the sarah boone case coming up and the adams family sorry i need to stop that i sound a little bit like um uh, georgia kappelman don't I? you know when she when she says to wendy uh, your hus your husband oh sorry your your ex husband sorry I keep doing that <laughs> anyway okay so in between and you know what I'm gonna say take care stay safe and come back I'll see you soon.